I hope you will join me while I create this unique mark making tool with the help of my horse. Meet Callie. She's going to help me with my project today, as is my husband or the other old crow. He is going to cut off a piece of her tail so I can utilize it for the brush on my paintbrushes. So horses' hair, there's other types of hair that you can use. I've seen people use human hair. There's all sorts of things that you can use to create your brush, but I'm going to ask Callie to contribute to my project today. She doesn't appear to be too phased, and she received a nice little tail trim. So here she is in her post-rainy day state. She needs a good brush and a good bath, but we'll take care of that a little bit later. So here is the hair that I have collected, and I've also collected some twigs from the yard. So the first thing I want to do is measure measure from a purchase paintbrush to kind of determine what length I want these brush handles. And I am just going to break off a number of pieces to utilize as, as my handles. And uh, these are scraps from my pine tree and, you know, a few other trees in the yard. So let's get these broken down into reasonable sizes and now I'm going to come back and kind of give them a little bit of, of a uh, further clean. So I want to peel off any bark that is loose and you know get down to the uh, true element of the wood here. So let's just clean that off. I'm going to come back in with my uh, sandpaper and kind of go over go over this twig and get it to a point where I feel like it is ready to accept the final step that I'm going to put on this, which is a varnish to keep this handle, you know, nice and protected. I'm using a fine grade sandpaper, very fine. And I'm just getting off any loose bits and removing anything that might catch my hands, any little places where I might have trimmed a little branch or something. Now that I have this nice and clean, it's time to begin to work with the horse hair. I want to pull out some masking tape and just get a clump of that hair together and where I am putting that tape is is kind of where I want the brush part to be. So I'm going to snip that off and what I have above the tape is where I'll probably want to stick that um, twig. So I'm kind of looking at it two ways. I'm thinking about sticking it in this end but I think that I decide to go in the other end. There we go. So I can put that in, get that wrapped around, and get that tied off, I think, easier doing it from that perspective, if you will. So I'm going to glue the twig and make sure there's plenty of glue on that, and then stick that down inside this hair right there. Now I'm going to let that glue dry. And once dry, I have taken it to my encaustic wax station. And I have the beeswax and Damar resin heated up, melted. And I am just applying that over that horsehair to adhere it fully to the twig. 
So you can see I'm putting on several coats and just going around the edge of that twig all the way around to securely get that horsehair into place. And now that I have it all waxed, I'm going to take a little heat gun to that wax to set that wax into place. And I will set that aside and allow that to cool. And I will continue to do this with each twig that I have brought over and we'll get each one waxed up. You can see my wax sitting here on my griddle. It is the mixture, as I said before, of the encaustic wax and the Demar resin. So now that that has cooled, I am placing some jute and just tying that off around that hair, where that hair has been um, connected to the twig with the wax. I'm going around that with the jute. And I'm just wrapping it tightly, pulling it as tight as I can. And then I'll tie that off in a little square knot here at the top. Okay, now I want to go back with the wax and just go over the top of the jute and just hit it one more time with that wax, encaustic wax. So it's a mixture of the beeswax and the Damar resin is what makes that the encaustic wax medium. So I'm just hitting it one more time and then we will clarify it or set it with the heat gun. And I will do that to each twig with each little bristles of horsehair. And once that is complete, we'll take it back into the other part of my studio and finish these off. And once everything is done at the waxing station, all I really need to do is kind of finalize these by taking off that masking tape that I have around the bristle. And that has held that... Um, horsehair in place while I waxed it, while I got it adhered to the twig, and now I'll pull that tape off and the next thing left to do is just trim that brush into the configuration I want. So I can cut across it straight and it's a flat brush, I can cut it on an angle um, and it is an angle brush or you know narrow it to the center and it becomes a round brush. It's just an interesting way to make, in my opinion, a mark making tool that is going to be unique to me. So now I'm just trimming the brushes and once done with that we'll pull some paper out and see what kind of mark it makes. Okay, so we have them all trimmed down and completed, and here's kind of the end result of that. So here are the brushes. I think there's eight there. So like I said before, that was a pretty good, pretty good trim. Let's just take a look at what kind of mark it makes. So let's grab a piece of paper, a little bit of black gesso, and just uh, make a random mark across that page. So I think this is gonna work out just fine. I have used them a couple of times and they clean up very nicely so I'm excited to have them in in my toolbox and I hope that you will try to make your own as well. So let's just take a final look at how they turned out and I'll give you a little bit of music as I go through these slides and then I'll talk to you at the end.
So thank you so much for stopping by and joining me while I made made my own paintbrushes. I am getting ready to start a project that I want to be very organic, very natural, and I am preparing. And this is kind of part of that preparation for getting that project in line and ready to go. So I hope you will subscribe to my channel and join me for that um, journal that I'm getting ready to begin work on and hit that like button it does help my channel exponentially and i always appreciate your comments so i shall say bye for now